Welcome to the recap of today's CodeBuddies.org live code hangout. Today we've been working on a, an open source project, a Django quick start of sorts. It's a minimal quick start for Django 4 and Bootstrap 5. The idea is that we oftentimes need to start a new project and define a custom user model with login and logout flow and maybe create a static you know, front page and navigation menu. Um, just doing those tasks can take at least an hour, in particular, in particular if you're um, unsure of how to complete those steps, you'll need to find a um, tutorial. So that can take a little bit of research. And essentially, we've um, we're just trying to save some time uh, following this Django best practices custom user model from Learn Django, published by Will Vincent, uh, with a couple modifications. The outcome is this we've got a Django quick start project with login, sign up pages. When you log in, oops, pull my own name, we can see that we get returned to the home page and um, we're, we have a logout button presented. This is also mobile responsive just because we're using Bootstrap 5 in this case. Uh, let's just take a quick look at the code. The uh, repo is available on GitHub. It's MIT licensed. Feel free to use it in your own projects and uh, any improvements are also welcome. Um, considering whether or not to add uh, kind of a, the password reset flow, forgot password and, and things like that. Uh, but in this session, I thought it was good to just stick with the initial home page, custom user model with login, uh, register, sign up, let's see, sign up, <laughs> sign in, and log out. Here's the GitHub pull request. I'll just read the files from top to bottom, just so you can get an idea of the scope of the changes. Um, so we're using Python Git Ignore, and I'm using VS Code, and VS Code has some metadata I wanted to keep out of the project. Uh, in addition, our default readme to our notes from the default readme, I wanted to add thanks to Will Vincent, uh, who created this excellent uh, tutorial article that I followed to d define the custom user model with register, login, and logout flow. Really clear, and uh, I think following very conventional or idiomatic Django code. Uh, I'm using poetry on the project. It, I like poetry because uh, it does improve on the PIP workflow slightly. It also tries to adhere to um, emerging Python conventions like this um, PyProj uh, .toml we'll see in a minute. The one convention, or the one setting I needed to add is um, to tell Poetry to create the Python virtual environment in the project. And that way uh, VS Code can kind of pick it up right off the bat without any, without any kind of, you know, configuration. VS Code already knows to look in these virtual environment directories. So that was good to go. Uh, we scaffolded an initial accounts app to define our custom user model and some templates and uh, one URL for logging in and out. Uh, we registered the, um, I'm just going top to bottom, but we registered our, our custom user model, which we named custom, or we named user. Uh, so one slight uh, deviation from the tutorial. Um, we'll come to that in a minute. And we needed to create two forms to, uh, for creating a user and changing them in the admin interface, as well as in the um, front end. And so we define, uh, we use this admin register decorator for the user model, and we registered this uh, custom user admin with the user creation form and the edit form we're changing for. And uh, our list will display the email and username, so we can take a look, a quick look at that. Uh, the outcome is that in our Django administration interface, we have a nice users list and we can edit users by clicking on them and setting additional details, adding them to uh, groups and whatnot, add a user, just reset the initial uh, fields. So we'll come back down here. Uh, this is just part of the app scaffolding when I created the app. Essentially, uh, the accounts application, it gave it a name and um, set the uh, 
the identity to use our big auto field. So each row in the database has an identity column. Here are the user create and edit forms. It's basically just telling, um, we're using the default Django user creation and edit form, change form, uh, but we're passing our custom user model in both cases and specifying the fields to be displayed. Uh, username and email are, uh, and password I think will be also an important one. I'm surprised we didn't have to specify that. I guess it, this user creation form does that because it has to add the password field twice for validation. This is a migration uh, auto-generated code here and our model is very simple. We're just inheriting from the Django abstract user so we get all the default fields, first name, last name, is staff, and everything else that comes with that. And uh, actually I can clean that up. And we were, it didn't, uh, the abstract user doesn't define a string property. So we have this username. So when it gets rendered into a, uh, the user interface, uh, well, it's interesting, it's uh, not a good example, I suppose. But uh, if you just use, pass the user in the user interface, uh, by default, it'll render this field. So the remain uh, or the next view are some um, basic templates. We create a login and sign up template, and we extend the base HTML so that there's a consistent look and feel across the templates. We're using a plugin called Crispy Forms to render uh, the forms in a way that uses Bootstrap classes and gives them a nice, a um, little more elegant, appeal, appealing aesthetic than the default rendering and essentially in our base template we have um, a title block that populates the title of the HTML document and it's a content block that lets us place in this case heading level one with the form and button oops I keep popping back over there I'll just close that for now Uh, you can see we're using the crispy filter on the form in our CSRF token. And that's for security and giving us the nice aesthetic. And we're using bootstrap classes on our submit button. These uh, login and sign up forms are basically the exact same, uh, but just targeting different uh, views. We don't have any tests. Our URL uh, and the accounts. Is just requiring, uh, just creating a sign up path. Everything else is sticking with Django conventions, very close to the way things work default with Django. It's just a basic scaffolding. So we created a custom sign up view in this case uh, using the user creation form. And when you successfully sign up, it'll just take you to the home page. And we're using the registration directory in our. Um, our template directory, like so. Each of the um, there's a project-wide template directory that contains our base, home, and navigation. And there's um, which I've previously kept in core, but instead I think core is now sticking mainly to configuration-related files. And there's app-specific uh, template directories. So we've got accounts templates. Django by default uses looks for registration related templates in a registration subdirectory. So we're just sticking we're just sticking with that convention where we've got our login and sign up template. Uh, this is part of the scaffolding. Our initial settings we needed several um, most of it's auto generated, but uh, we included our crispy forms and um, our accounts app. We told crispy to use the Bootstrap five template pack. This is all generic. We added this base templates directory so that we can put some kind of global templates like the home page, navigation, base HTML, all in one uh, easy to find location instead of nestling, nesting it within the um, core directory, which uh, we also had to do, had to add it. I would have had to add that to this uh, configuration. And it's still going to use the app directories for app specific templates, but we just wanted one global directory, one additional global directory. We're just going to use SQLite. I'm not going to make any decisions for downstream projects. All the Postgres is a, um, 
primary recommendation. But for starting, SQLite takes you quite far just to get your idea into reality. We define a custom user model, so we're just telling Django our auth user model use, uses account user. Um, and when you log in and log out to redirect to the home page. Other than that, these are pretty, this is pretty um, static. And this is generated by Django 4, so it's defaulting to the big auto field. Uh, our URLs, we needed to add um, a couple of things. We wanted to render a home template as the kind of base path. We, the admin URLs were already registered. We also added the accounts URLs from our accounts app as well as the Django authentication URLs. So kind of mixed those together under the accounts. For one view, um, one view is defined here, the custom view for sign up, and the remaining views are defined by Django. So we're just again sticking close to the Django defaults. Uh, this is coming from the scaffolding. This manage pie comes from the scaffolding. Our base templates just using HTML5. Um, kind of, I just use an Emmet to auto um, to create this HTML5 scaffolding. Um, we have a HTML head title is um, passed, or you can override that in, at the template level by including this title block. We include uh, Bootstrap 5 from CDN. I should probably consider about whether or not we're going to hard code this, or just 5.x.x would be sufficient. Uh, we defined a navigation menu in a separate file because the navigation menu can get kind of lengthy, and so it's a little cleaner to just do it as an include. We created a content block that allows you at the template level to specify what content should render in a given view or um, static template, and uh, wrap that in a bootstrap container for a nice al clean alignment. And then each of our other templates, again, they extend this base HTML for consistency and can override the title of the page that will display there in the tab and the content. And so the home page is just very simple, welcome message. Our navigation menu is a little bit more um, lengthy, but not too, nothing really fancy going on here. It's just kind of a boilerplate bootstrap five uh, navigation menu. Um, we specify the title and a conditional to check if the user is logged in. And I might end up floating these to the right. I'm not sure. That might be a slight improvement I can add. Maybe off, the, off stream I'll just do that really quickly before closing out this pull request. But essentially we created, uh, in the case they're authenticated, a logout button that uses the default Django logout URL and redirects you to the home page. There's no real... Um, page that renders there. It's just a, a view that redirects and clears your, your authentication token, I suppose. But in the case you're not authenticated, and we want to give options to log in or sign up, and those are uh, our named uh, URLs. And finally, last but not least, the project metadata. We scaffolded it with Poetry. It's version 0.1.0 of the Django Quick Start and um, MIT licensed Python 4, Django 5, using crispy forms. Django, did I say Django 4 or Python 4? <laughs> Python 3.9, Django 4, Bootstrap 5. Um, using Black and Flake 8 for the development uh, code formatting, iSort for sorting the imports, and that's about it. So hopefully it'll save some time on your projects and uh, if you've got any suggestions, uh, feel free to uh, open a, an issue here on GitHub. I'm glad for uh, to take a look at pull requests as well for suggestions for improvement, keeping it fairly generic. All right. Well, again, this has been a CodeBuddies.org live code hangout. If you want to get involved with this or similar projects, stop by CodeBuddies.org. Have a great day, and thanks for watching.